Okay, so what we have here is we have a drywall hole that electricians have cut, and um, they were generous enough to leave this piece. And then we have a backer piece. On your backer pieces, uh, I prefer MDF because it doesn't split. If you use regular wood, a lot of the times it will split on you. So, um, and never use a shim because it will fall to pieces behind the wall. So what you do is you just stick this backer piece behind the wall and you wanna bring it back up to here so you have something to screw to. So you just wanna bring your drill up and you gotta hang on to it. So you want to countersink your screw just a little bit, put your second screw in it to sink it, and you bring your drywall piece up, just set in there just like that. And you have it secured now. So basically we've got the, the patch put in. Now we're going to tape it with uh, clear mesh. You just want to tape all the caps. Okay. Now we're going to mud it. I want to show you what the mud looks like. It's a uh, Thicker than pancake batter, but um, more pliable than cookie dough. So that's kind of where you want it when you're putting your first coat on. I always like to clean the edge of my brush off or the, my putty knife. Clean the edge off of it so it doesn't fall off the edge. Clean the edge up. And that's good for a first coat. Okay, so I have a, a gun that heats up to 1200 degrees. It's a heat gun, it heats up to 1200 degrees, and it's going to dry. As you can see on this section, it's already started to turn white versus the dark section. So we're just going to dry this whole thing. This is why we use 20 minute mud because it hardens in 20 minutes and you can dry it really fast to apply two more coats if necessary. Okay, so with the second coat, and you see this is already dry, um, the second coat, we want it a little bit thinner, and we're going to bring it out with a wider knife. This is a 10-inch knife. So, um, same thing, clean your edges of the knife off. Notice the technique I'm using with these two fingers. Just so it applies an even coat. What I do is if you use one knife or one finger on this knife, it creates middle tension. So it creates a V on your mud line. If you put two, it has a, a less surface space so it can go across it flat. So I'm just gonna clean the edges up. How I do that is I'm just applying a pressure to one side of the knife, drawing it over. So it's less you have to sand. and then we'll draw that and come back to it. A lot of guys, when they do their drywall, they wanna say, how can I fix this seam versus how can I make this flat? That's what you need to have in your head. How can I make this all flat? So basically you're gonna focus on all the little lines that are in it and you just wanna sand them all down to where you can make it as flat as possible. So we'll start up here and then we'll work our way onto the inside. Thank <laughs> you. 
And because this is 20 minute mud, we use an 80 grit sandpaper or a 60 grit if it's really thick. Sometimes you can feel if you, if you feel any lumps in it. You can sand it a little more. And sometimes the only way to determine if you need a third coat is if you have like a piece of the mesh coming back through. So like this little line here and this little thing sticking out and then this little thing sticking out. You just you can just cut those areas. Just hit it one, two, three right there, redry it and sand it, and then it's ready for paint. Okay, so one thing I want to know before we start painting is that, um, and this is a lot of uh, painters miss this because it causes flashing on their, their wall. You can look down a wall and you can see all these spots. What that is is because they didn't paint outside their sand zone, they just painted up the, covered up the white. When I say sand zone, there's a little, little dust cloud right up here where I sanded. So you want to go about two inches past that when you're painting. Um, just so that when you get it painted that it's not going to have any flashing from that dust. So what I like to use is these three quarter inch uh, nap rollers. Um, they're for rough surfaces. And the reason is because this, you can see this wall has uh, a little bit of texture on it. If you were to just run a brush over this, it'd look terrible uh, and it wouldn't blend. So the, the rough surface rollers are the ones that I use to make this all blend. <laughs> 